And then also there is here, the printing of money, quantitative easing. Anybody heard that term before? Yeah, okay. Who understands what quantitative easing is about? Okay, a few hands have gone up. Quantitative easing is an erosion of our savings and our pensions. That's what it is. And the, why, the way in which the government is printing money is the same way that this was being printed and creating false, false hope. And so I hope this evening, this presentation, will help you realize that there is a way forward, but it requires you to think a little bit different to the mainstream. Are you with me in doing that this evening? Good. So my first question is, inflation. What's the current rate of inflation? 3.5%. Absolutely. So the cost of living is going up at 3.5%. Now, the banks are printing money in the intention to reduce inflation down to 2%. But they're finding it an uphill struggle. At the same time, this printing of money is devaluing our savings and our pensions. I'm going to keep saying that because this is happening today. In fact, they just announced the, the third um, um, bout of quantitative easing. £50 billion pounds they'll be pumping into the economy to stimulate the economy. That would make a total of £375 billion pounds being printed and put into the economy to stimulate it. So what are the banks giving us? What are the base rates at the moment? This graph gives it away a little bit. If you look back to uh, 1980, you can see how high interest rates were. If you are a property owner and paying a mortgage, maybe not so good times. Who knows what the current base rate is? 0.5. Sorry? 0.5. Absolutely, 0.5%. So while our savings are growing at 0.5%, cost of living is going up 3.5. I want you to think about that for a moment. Because while you're sitting here, believe it or not, although you're not spending any money, you're losing it. Maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel with regards to the banks. And maybe interest rates will go up. But this here from This Is Money, this was just on the 10th of July, a few days ago, and they were saying that interest rates are set to go down to 2.5%, to 0.25%, which won't increase to back to 5% until 2015. And then we won't see an increase to 2017. That's five years from now before we start to see our interest rates going up, but yet still lower than the projected rate of inflation. So would you like to endure another five years of losing money? That's my question. Not if you say yes, shake your if you say no. Okay, if you're doing this, then you're part of our camp, okay? Because we're going to show you a way forward this evening. So where do we turn? Savings. Well, I've kind of ruled that one out. Endowments. I won't even mention endowments. Who had an endowment in the room? Endowment. Did you have a red warning letter? Yes. Okay. We meet with people on a regular basis who have red warning letters about their endowments. So where else do we turn? Property. Of course, if you're a buy-to-let landlord, then your interest rate is low. You're getting good yields on your property. Yes? Very nice. Very, very good position to be in at this moment in time. Pensions. I'm going to touch on pensions. Why do we focus on pensions? As legacy wealth creation, we're going to focus on wealth creation and wealth preservation. And wealth, we like to believe, is defined as the length of time you can live without the need to work for money. And I would say 98% of the people we meet on a daily basis, 100% of their wealth is constituted in their pensions. 100% of their wealth. I'm not sure if anybody saw the program last night, um, which was with um, Nick and Margaret from The Apprentice. Anybody see that last night? Yeah. Yeah, where they were putting 70-year-olds back into the workplace. Because that's what the government are encouraging us to be considering, in fact, preparing for, despite having saved into pensions. Because it doesn't constitute your wealth. 
hence the campaign Preventing Poverty in Your Town. So what are the papers saying? Pensions in crisis as funds collapse. Osborne picks the pockets of pensioners. Pension funds in meltdown. Pensioners fund tax cut. Pension values to fall by 70%. Millions hit by pension gambling. Till death us do work. New tax rate on pensions. Pensions pay for millions. Your pensions shrink by 75%. Pensions cut by £500 a year. Pensions disaster for one in two workers. Get set to work to 66. Women work past 70. Millions afraid to turn on their heating. Millions now can't afford to retire. The warning is there. The writing's on the wall, but we find that with it being maybe 10 years away, 20 years away, there's a little bit of inertia, a little bit of lack of desire to get it sorted now. I'm sorry to give you all this doom and gloom, but I'm hoping that it helps you realize what we're facing. I believe that if you're facing a problem, you address the problem, you look at it. Would you agree? Any problem in life, you look at it, you analyze it, and then you start to pull it apart and then piece it back together again. This was published just a few days ago. If you have money in a pension, since 2007, for every £100 you received a return on investment of £1.36. This is before quantitative easing, which as I mentioned to you before, erodes pensions and erodes savings. So what's the cause? Well, the stock market's a big cause. What we're experiencing now for this economic struggle has a major impact. In fact, 80% of pensions are invested in the stock market. Hands up in the room if you have a pension. Okay, keep your hand up, please. Would you invest in the stock market? Okay, interesting. Very interesting, that one. You have money in a pension, but you wouldn't invest in the stock market. Your money is invested in the stock market, but this is not the only problem. In fact, the government commissioned a think tank by the name of Civitas to carry out a detailed report to find out what is going on with the UK pension crisis. What's causing it? And of course the stock market has a bearing, but also, as it concludes here, legislation, those writing and creating the rules, they have permitted anti-consumer practices amongst pension providers. These privately owned companies work in the interest of their shareholders. Of course, privately owned companies acting in their own interest first. Millions of pensioners will have their retirement income stripped of between 20 to 75 percent. How? Where? Fees is the answer. How much do you believe is being charged in fees? And say you put in a hundred thousand pounds over your working career, your working life. How much do you think you pay in fees? Take a guess. Ten thousand? Twenty thousand? Forty to sixty thousand will go in fees, regardless of how the pension is performing. I'm not sure if any of you have seen the Panorama program called You Took My Pension. Yeah. If you've not seen it, log on to our YouTube channel. In fact, you'll find probably about 30 news reports on pensions on our YouTube channel. That's YouTube forward slash Pension Reality News. If you've not been there, have a look. The warning signs are out there. So if you have £40,000 in a pension, I'm talking about pensions at the moment, but this also relates to those of you in the room who may have savings, and your savings is, are dwindling, and that's part of your nest egg. But if you have money tied up in a pension, when you retire, if you have 40,000, you can expect to receive as little as 250 pounds a month before tax. That's based on today. What's it gonna be like in 20 years time? Think about it. 
about that for a moment. Think about the impact that would have on you and your lifestyle. Would you be like literally thousands of pensioners here in the UK already dying because they can't afford to heat their home? We see this as an epidemic. That's why we started the campaign, because we feel it's a system that's failed us. And it fails every single one of us. And then what's worse about it, when you put your money into a pension, in the event of your death, your children don't get anything. If you've not read this book, read it. I encourage you to read it, um, by Stephen Hassler. There is another way, is the title of his book. And he's talking about what we're seeing today, and he's trying to encourage the government to look at another way. But that's our message for you this evening. There is another way, a very bright way, um, a way that a lot of us will be familiar with. Property, Caribbean, tourism. But how do we get there? First of all, the way is the way of the rich and the wealthy. What have the rich and the wealthy been doing for the last 23 years? Hands up if you've heard of this before. A self-invested personal pension. Okay, if you've heard me on the radio, you might have heard about that because I'm, I'm an advocate of this for so many reasons. For personal reasons, as well as for, I guess, my, my purpose in life. I think I've defined my purpose in life, finally, is to help people with this problem. Now, Nigel Lawson said the, this pension is still a pension. Those of you who have money in a pension, your money remains in a pension, which is great. You get all the tax benefits. You can contribute as usual. Your employer can contribute. But as it says here, it's self-invested. Now, they were set up by Nigel Lawson in 1989 for people with more than 200,000 pounds just in pension savings. So the rich and the wealthy to help those who are making the decisions to better improve their lifestyle for themselves and their, their loved ones. However, in 2006, legislation changed. These changes were brought about by the 2004 Finance Act, which meant anybody with a pension could set up a self-invested personal pension. And they're becoming more and more popular. Why are they becoming more popular? Well, the first reason is, it's still a pension, so if you've got money, you can take control and you see that those two words there bank account all of that money that you saved in pensions right now is in the bank account of that pension provider whoever that may be with so in terms of trust law I know um, for any solicitors will be very familiar with this in terms of trust law you are referred to as the legal trustee so beg your pardon the general trustee of your money However, you give a legal right to a third party, so they're the legal trustee of your money. When you set up a SIP, you become the legal trustee, which means all of that money goes into a bank account in your name. So God forbid anything happen to you, it forms a part of your estate. Your children will inherit what you have saved over the years. Hence the name of our company, Legacy Wealth Creation. Because at the moment, as it stands, if you've got money in a pension, anything happens to you, your loved ones don't get anything. You get the tax relief, your company can contribute. But then what's great about it is you are in the driving seat. And you can then make investments by assets which have been approved by the Financial Services Authority for the SIP acquisition. And those assets, those investments, sit within the tax wrapper of your pension. Does that make sense? So it sits within, inside your SIP. You, you part own that asset indirectly via a trust. Hence why it forms a part of your estate and your next generation can benefit. And while these investments sit within inside your pension, every year as they bring in profits, those profits go into that bank account. So you're ultimately recycling the money that you have and making it work harder for you through the acquisition of income producing assets. The question is, well, what type of assets? You know, this money is very important to me. This is my wealth. This constitutes how long I can live without the need to work right now. 
To be honest with you, this is the most important money in your life. Because this is going to sustain you when you can't work or don't want to work. So for us, we take great pleasure in being able to work with Freedom Bay, who you will hear from, so you can understand how safe and how secure your money is, and more importantly, who your money is invested with, what's the track record of those individuals, what have they done in the past, where is my money while the project is going ahead, what's, what's to come, what's my exit strategy, how much money will I receive? All of these questions I'm sure are going through your head now that we're talking about investment. And I assure you we can answer every single one of them in a very positive fashion. So while your money is working harder for you, and you are living your day-to-day -day life, you're going ahead with the great knowledge that while the financial climate and the financial crisis is taking its toll on you or on people, it's not impacting you anymore. And when you do choose to retire, from the age 55, we have a lot of clients who had worked for maybe a local authority or a, um, had a final salary scheme. And the, require, the um, legislation or the parameters of that pension means that they can't actually take a benefit until they're 65. However, with a SIP, you can start to draw benefits from 55. You can choose how much you take, when you take it. So nobody is dictating to you when you can retire, when you can start drawing your benefits, which is great. You can do something called a drawdown up to 7%. Remember, if you remember the slide before, annuities at the moment are paying about 4 All of this is detailed in great length inside your pack. If you have some questions around a self-invested personal pension, you'll find this little leaflet inside your pack where most of those questions you have will be answered. What I'd like to do now is just summarize quickly before I hand over. So with a SIP, you can take control of the money in your pension, remove it from the volatile stock market and out of the hands of greedy pension providers. Also, you can leave a legacy for your loved ones. You plan up in the room with your children. Okay. Now, whether you have money in a pension or whether you have money in savings, leaving a legacy is important. Would you agree? If you don't have children now, at least planning ahead for your retirement and having a luxury one, one that you deserve. So you can make your money work harder for you and choose when you retire. And along that journey, you can use that money to buy luxury property in the Caribbean. Now, you've got to understand something about the Caribbean. The Caribbean is uh, the playground for the rich and the wealthy. Okay? Caribbean property prices have been going up since records began in 1942. Constant growth in land prices and property prices in the Caribbean. Also, tourism has been growing year on year. So, if you could take those two elements, factor in an absolute giant in terms of commercial property, and has worked with a very long list, then you'll have a great degree of confidence in what your future has for you. So without further ado, I'd like to invite onto the stage um, Mr. Mark Tomlinson, who I believe doesn't need much introduction. If you've not had a chance to speak to him, there's going to be more food and more drinks afterwards, more networking. <laughs> Grab Mark and his business partner Robert Whitten, who you will hear from as well. And if you like property and you like investing and you want to just maybe get that little edge, that experience to rub off on you, 20 plus years of experience in commercial property. Just think about that for one second. If you want to change your financial future, you have to do it. And I actually insist that you do it and you start with legacy wealth creation. And what you start to do this evening is that you start to create and leave a legacy for yourselves and for your children and for a future. If you don't, and one of my other favorite sayings, nothing changes, nothing changes, and that's the definition of insanity, 
you will be one of those people in 10 to 15 years' time, sitting at home in the cold, not watching the television, not on holiday, and looking back to this evening and thinking, I wish I'd taken those people's advice. So you have an opportunity here this evening, if any of you, and I'm sure people are feeling financial pain, who, who's felt financial pain today, yesterday, last week, last month? I have. I'm not going to lie. I'll stand here and put my hand up. It's very, very painful at the moment, but you can change it. The world is in financial meltdown. Governments are destroying economies. Banks and institutions are destroying everything that governments haven't destroyed. The weather is horrendous. <laughs> and even worse than all that, if you think it can get worse, Robin Van Persie wants to leave the most beautiful football club in the world. <laughs> but tonight, we're going to solve all those problems and more. As Sean alluded to earlier, um, myself and Robert, who you're going to hear from in a second, we are serial property entrepreneurs. We're pioneers. We're discoverers. We're purchasers and in investments, investors of prime real estate all over the world. With a 20 year proven track record of delivering credible investment opportunities. Based in Canary Wharf, as you can see from the slides, our doors are always open and anybody in this room, you're more than welcome to come and see us at any point. We believe in being transparent and open to anybody that comes and joins our family and comes and makes money with us. One of the reasons that we've been and we have longevity over this period of time, I know I don't look old enough to have been in property for that long, <laughs> is that the amount of due diligence and care and attention we take to the investments we make is obviously absolutely paramount. One of the things that we've always done, Robert in particular has done, is invest our own seed capital into every single investment opportunity that we've ever brought to the marketplace. If it's not good enough for us, it's not good enough for you. And our money will always be in the game. We will always have more skin in the game than anybody else. And when we talk about, if you like, investments and property in particular, we're very, very, very thorough in all the work that we put in to the projects that we're looking to purchase before we purchase them. Due diligence is absolutely paramount. And one of the things that I think it's very, very important to do is to do due diligence on the people that you're investing in before the product that you invest in. And if you think about it, and I only thought about this on, on the train uh, this afternoon in the rain when I was worrying about my hair getting wet. Um, <coughs> you take the government, for example. They haven't been in power for very long. They inherit um, a system that might be dysfunctional and might not be working, but they don't have a track record, do they? They come to power, and all of a sudden, they've got to put everything right. Where we're different is that we've been delivering year in, year out, for over, over 20 years. Some of the people that have invested um, with Robert along this fantastic road, an amazing story of success, and believe you me, we are very competitive people. We are only interested in being number one. Our biggest competitor, in our opinion, is ourselves. Every single day we strive to be better than we were yesterday, to produce better products and investments, obviously for ourselves, but also for you people. And the opportunities that we now present are available to everybody. You've seen from Sean's presentation and going forward that the opportunities to invest, you might think, wow, the Caribbean, it's out of my reach. St. Lucia, Freedom Bay, these multi-million pound opportunities, I can't invest in those. But you're going to find out later that you can invest in them. And these opportunities are available every single day to all of you. But if you want that to happen, it's down to you, all of you as individuals. 
you can change your financial future. So please do. Will everybody do that for me? Yes. I didn't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Say yes, Mark. Yes, Mark. And you'll get extra homework later. There's some difficult questions coming. Anyway, over this period of 20 years, some of the people that have invested with us are the likes of uh, Sir David Frost, Simon Cowell, Sir Alex Ferguson, and many, many high-profile people. They've invested in projects with us, not just in the residential and commercial sectors, not just in the UK, not just in Europe, but all over the world. And we continue to deliver. And one of the reasons that we continue to deliver is because we have a fantastic team of people at Canary Wharf with huge amounts of knowledge, which enables us to de-risk opportunities with the power and information that we have available to us, strategic partners that we put in place to help us. But also, and at the top of any company, we have a fantastically successful pioneer and entrepreneur. And without further ado, and when I talked about solving the problems earlier, this man probably can solve most of those for us, and he actually believes that he's a better striker than Robin Van Persie. <laughs> I'm not sure what his transfer value is, we might find out later. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to introduce you to the group chairman, the man behind Freedom Bay, a fantastically successful entrepreneur and pioneer, Robert Whitten. introduction. Um, what we're going to now do is we're, we're going to put uh, Robert through a little bit of a grilling and um, he asked me on the train here earlier um, what the questions were going to be and I wouldn't tell him and then when we looked like we were going to be late it was because he didn't have any money on his oyster card so he's already asked to borrow my wallet once this evening but there we go. Robert, 20 years, success every single day, I can't believe that you're not grey yet and I am, how did that happen? But please share with everybody this evening, in your opinion, in your opinion, why why it is that property is something that every single person here this evening should be looking at as a credible opportunity. And it's not just for men. <laughs> um, well, um, <clears throat> there are people obviously that have made a lot of wealth and a lot of money out of. Uh, other other asset classes, including shares. I know that they've been um, uh, criticised this evening, but a lot of people have made a lot of money out of those and out of commodities and other asset classes. But for me, it's always been real estate. And I think that if you look at the um, if you look at the rich list in, in the United Kingdom, uh, the vast majority of the people on that list have either made their money in real estate or have consolidated their wealth in real estate. And the beauty about real estate, from my point of view, is that it's such a tangible asset. It's something that you can look at, you can touch, you can feel. It's something you can live in, you can work in, you can play in, you can sleep in. Um, it is something that is very tangible. And one of the stories that I often use, and in fact it's been reiterated by a, a, a report that was out today, um, but for those of you who remember the Enron scandal, now Enron was a a huge American company had a, a, a double A credit rating. And there were two investors. So one who owned a, a office building in Manhattan that was let to Enron. And he had invested a substantial amount of money in buying that property. Um, and then there was another investor that had all his wealth uh, in Enron shares. Now Enron went from double A credit rating to a zero worthless company. So the guy that had the shares, his 20 million uh, US dollars worth of shares have gone from 20 million to zero, and there was absolutely nothing he could do about it. The chap that had the office building in Manhattan, now he may have lost a really good tenant, but he was able to relet that tenant to uh, that property to a, another tenant, and, and his actually asset base never eroded. In fact, it actually increased because he managed to relet it at a, at a higher rent. And today, actually, there was a, another report that was out by CBRE, which was about the UK, and it was about people that had invested in a 
property that was lent to banks, to, to UK banks. Um, now, they haven't performed particularly well. So if you'd invested £100 into property lent to UK banks in 2007, a very sort of peak of the market, today that will be worth like £107, which is not a particularly good return, in my view. But had you invested £100 in a general basket of banking stock, UK banks, that £100 today will be worth £48. And that, that shows to me really why I think that property has this, has this longevity about it. It is a, it a long-term investment. It's not a short-term, quick gain. And I think that's why property, I think, stands the test of time, which is why so much wealth, so much uh, people that are the wealthiest in the country and indeed throughout the world uh, end up either investing or consolidating the wealth in property. I, mean, I think we can probably um, add to that, for those of you that know um, Warren Buffett, does his name ring a bell? Um, he actually says, and obviously he's possibly the most um, fantastic entrepreneur of our time in terms of property, obviously the best holding period for property is forever. So those of you, I'm sure that um, when you go home this evening, you know what you paid for your home maybe years and years ago, and you look at what its value is now, you can see that, you know, that is probably the best investment you've ever made. And if you continue to make property investments, you'll continue to be successful entrepreneurs yourself. But, and a word of caution, obviously, one of the things that you need to be aware of and you need to make sure that you do is be in the right place at the right time. And obviously, at the moment, uh, with the Eurozone crisis, it's probably extremely important to be investing in the right real estate, in the right location, with the location being paramount to any investment. And Robert had the foresight uh, several years ago to obviously, with his crystal ball, see what was going to happen with the Eurozone crisis, and obviously look to move the, the organisation towards an emerging opportunity. And that opportunity obviously being the amazing Caribbean, whether you're from St. Lucia or Barbados or any of the islands, it is an absolutely idyllic, amazing, wonderful part of the world. And Robert has fallen in love with St. Lucia. And those of you that uh, are from there, I'm sure you would agree with me, it's as, as Condé Nast said, it's one of the four most beautiful islands in the world. Absolutely. As, <laughs> I'll pay you later. <laughs> As Oprah Winfrey um, said to me on the telephone this afternoon, I can never get off the phone fast enough. Um, the, the Pitons are one of the five places in St. Lucia you must visit before you die. And for those of you that follow, anybody on Twitter? If you follow Oprah on Twitter, you know, one of her iconic sayings is, you know, you only have one life to live. So make sure you live the best life you can. And obviously, St. Lucia is where she lives her life. And probably in the not too distant future, Robert and Vina will end up there and I'll be doing even more work than I'm currently doing. But anyway, I go on. Robert, St. Lucia, we all know it's amazing. It's a hidden gem. It's the Helen of the West Indies. But Freedom Bay, it's an absolutely, unbelievably iconic resort. Can you just tell everybody a little bit more about the resort and why you bought it and what you see for the future? Um, yeah, uh, I think that um, Mark is absolutely right. I, I have fallen in love with St. Lucia, but I'd also just like to say that in terms of the way that I do business, uh, I slightly divorce those kind of emotions. So for me, investing in, in St. Lucia was always uh, a kind of a cold business decision. And um, when I was looking for a, a new market in which to invest, so I was looking for an emerging but an established market, um, it led me, ha having invested in ho the hospitality sector for some some years and with some success, uh, it led me to naturally to the Caribbean because, as Mark says, it is a playground for the rich, and there is um, a extraordinary rise in global affluence. Now, it does seem slightly odd in this time when we're kind of just coming out of recession or even just going back into recession in terms of the, the UK, 
to talk about global affluence, but the, the richest two to five percent of the world have got extremely wealthy uh, over the last five years, and that is a trend that is not going to stop, and it's a, it's a kind of global effect. So there's new wealth around the world, whether it's in China, or it's in the Middle East, or it's in Russia, um, or it's in South America. Um, so the reason I, I focus on, on the Caribbean is I believe it will benefit from that rise of global affluence, and it will benefit from the resurgence of the US economy, because um, it sits very <coughs> geographically strategic between, between those. Um, and St. Lucia itself, um, it is uh, a place where it's relatively easy to, to do business, where buying property uh, is protected by effectively British law, when you have land registry, where there's some issues on title. But, but predominantly, it, it is a great value proposition. If you compare it to other markets, if you compare it to uh, other islands, particularly Barbados, but also Anguilla, uh, if you compare it to, to Mustique, um, the, the, the value proposition there is extraordinary, in my view. And, and yet it has this massive kind of global infrastructure. So having honed in on, on, on St. Lucia, we then look to pick within that island what is the very best. Because I'm someone that believes investing in prime real estate, because prime is prime, will always be prime. You only have to look at what's happened in London. You know, prime London real estate has, uh, in terms of price inflation, has catapulted over the last few years during the recession because people want safe havens and they want to invest in prime. So we, we managed to, to find this phenomenal site uh, at the Pitons, which is uh, whenever you see a, uh, an image of St. Lucia, it's always about the Pitons. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, we've got planning permission to be, build a, a, an eco-resort there, but now there is a, a moratorium against any further development. So there's a limitation on any further supply. And yet, I believe demand will continue to increase. And that's always a good thing. Thank you. Now, obviously, we've got an iconic resort. We've got the prime real estate, possibly, um, definitely in St. Lucia, possibly in the Caribbean. What we do as an organisation is also look to align ourselves with extremely powerful and strong strategic partners. And our biggest partner, who we've been negotiating with over the last couple of weeks, um, Robert will tell you a little bit more about that, and some of our other partners, in order to give this opportunity even more credibility. Robert, can you tell and share with everybody this evening who we're involved with on the island and over the next few years, who's going to help us deliver this absolutely amazing opportunity? Well, first of all, in terms of the, uh, the operator, because when you're building a resort, the operator is very key. Um, so we were very fortunate to negotiate an agreement with uh, Six Senses uh, Resorts and Spas, which if anyone's ever stayed at one of their resorts are, uh, are absolutely amazing. They're a five-star operator, operate 42 uh, hotels uh, around the world. Um, they've recently been um, taken over by Pegasus Capital, which are a very large US uh, private equity company, which are pumping hundreds of millions into that brand just to, to make it a real, truly global brand. Um, and Freedom Bay will be the first Six Senses uh, operation in the Caribbean. Um, in terms of investors, um, both myself uh, and my family trust have invested very heavily uh, in this development. So I think it's always worth knowing that um, it, it, if something ever went wrong with this, because let's face it, there's, there's, no, there's always some risk in investment. Uh, that I have substantially more to lose than anyone else that was in, in investing with it. Um, but in addition to that, um, uh, as I've been in business for uh, a number of years and have a very good track record and have lots of people that are supporting me on, on investments and projects throughout those years, uh, we have a number of parties that have co-invested. Uh, so one of them is called LJ Capital. Um, they are based in London. Effectively, uh, they are the London office of the Guggenheim family. The Guggenheim family, obviously, one of the most 
wealthiest families in the world um, from uh, the US. Um, in addition to that, we have the Boca Fund, which are basically an emerging market fund that have invested in a number of markets around the world. Previously had a big fund in Montenegro, which was very successful, and now their focus is St. Lucia. And one other thing I can tell you, which is very much kind of hot off the press, is that our other investor is the government of St. Lucia. This is a very rare event in the fact that uh, a Caribbean government actually investing directly in a project, but the government of St. Lucia have also invested directly into this project because they see it as such a key uh, and fundamental project to, um, uh, to, to, to the resurgence of, of their own economy and to the tourist sector, which is so vital to that island. Thank you very much. Does that inspire you all, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I can't hear you again. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, without further ado, we need, we need to move on. Um, one last thing, if you're going to give everybody here that's very kindly given up their time to come this evening one piece of advice, what would it be? Support Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you say? Well, all right, thank you. Now then, so who, who wants to go to Freedom Bay? Who wants to become a part of our family? Come on, I need to see more hands. Oh dear, oh dear, I'm going to have to wake you up. But if I can't wake you up, I'm now going to introduce you to a fantastic lady. Enough of us men to sleep tonight, she's not going to be able to sleep at all because she's going to be too busy talking to all of you. But without further ado, this lady's going to change your lives. She's going to show you how, with Legacy Wealth Creation, you are going to join us in St. Lucia and obviously in the sunshine. So we've solved the weather problem. Without further ado, put your hands together, please, for Caprinka Axelrod. Wow, thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for joining us all tonight. Uh, welcome to the sunshine in St. Lucia. And if you're not reserving tonight, you're missing a, an incredible opportunity. So at the end of the presentation, I will talk through the purchase opportunities and how you can make money with Freedom Bay, the most important part, of course, of uh, buying into Freedom Bay. And I will be at the back at a table over there. Uh, you can ask me any questions tonight. If you do want to reserve at the end of uh, our presentation or you want an allocation at the end of our presentation, um, all of you that are sitting down or that are standing, there is packs on your chairs or on the back of the tables there at the end. Just fill a reservation form or come and ask me questions and then fill a reservation form uh, thereafter. So without further ado, here it is, how you can actually become a part of Freedom Bay. There's three ways to buy in Freedom Bay. You can either buy a part of a villa into the hotel part of Freedom Bay or you can buy a whole hotel villa, or you can buy a land plot and build your own dream villa. Because tonight's presentation is centered around um, preventing poverty and retirement, and we've shown to talk to you about pensions, I will go into further detail specifically about what our SIP approved products are. Uh, and for the purpose of tonight's presentation, I'll go into more detail on the fractional ownership and, and what fractional ownership is at Freedom Bay. Um, but if you do want to know a little bit more about the other options, I'm here tonight again and I can talk to you about the other details as well. So this is how you can actually make money with Freedom Bay. Each and every villa into the hotel is divided into 52 fractions. We keep 16 of those fractions and we sell 36 of those fractions. A one bed fraction starts from about 22,000 pounds and the three bed fraction start from about 43,000 pounds. So you can see we cover a range that suits everyone's pensions, everyone's investments. If you've got savings that are sitting in, in an ISO or obviously sitting in a bank account and not making much money, then this is what you can actually make with Freedom Bay. For the first two years during the construction period, we'll pay you 6% at the end of every year. Guaranteed. Your funds, and I will go through the purchase process in a few minutes, is sitting safely and securely with a company called Heritage. 
There's a little bit of information in your packs about heritage and what heritage as trustees and as, and as escrow account holders will do for you. They will actually protect your money until we complete the development. Anyone knows what an escrow account is here? No? Yep. One hand? <laughs> an escrow account is basically a third party account that abides by certain terms and conditions. And effectively in this, in this case, an escrow account is a third party account with a company called Heritage where your funds will see, sit and be guarded until we've actually completed the development. They will exchange assets, they will, ex they will exchange your money with the asset, with the villa once we've actually completed the project and the development. And until that time happens, obviously you're making 6%. Once the hotel is open and operational, we'll pay you 8% guaranteed return for three years. That's irrespective of what the hotel is making. Once the guarantee period is over, then you will go into 50-50 income split with the hotel. Who wants to make more money? Why haven't we guaranteed you 10%, for example? Why haven't we guaranteed 12? That's a nice round number, isn't it? 10% sounds good, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah? yeah? Why do you think we've actually only said eight? Because that's sustainable. We are a company that does a lot of checks, uh, as you heard from Robert and from Mark earlier uh, tonight. One of the things that you've got to make with any of your investments is you've got to do your due diligence. We've actually done our due diligence, we've done our homework, we've put all the figures and the calculations and the models together, and don't take our word for it, there's actually big professional companies that work alongside with us to actually check all our homework and all our figures as well. We've got Grant Thornton, we've got companies such as Whitebridge, which is a big hospitality company and an offshoot of Cushman and Wakefield that work with us to actually check and make, make sure that our figures work. And this is the reason why the numbers that you actually see here are the numbers that you see here, because these numbers are numbers that we know are sustainable and we know that the market in St. Lucia is going to deliver with the hotel that we're going to build out there. So what happens to your money over um, a 10 year period, for example, let's say tonight you're ready and you want to invest £22,000, which is the minimum investment that you can do into St. Lucia. Over 10 years, that becomes about £54,000. And that's a very conservative assumption. We've got, as I said to you, a, a number of companies have worked with us. HVS is another one, which is an American hotelier group. And they predicted that when the hotel is open in 2014, the occupancy rate of the hotel is going to be 67%. 67% is quite, quite a conservative number, would you agree? For a hotel, for, for a luxurious hotel, with 42 hotels worldwide, would you agree? Yeah. yeah? We've also taken into account that as we say, obviously inflation here is 3.5%, but inflation plays an interesting number as well when your funds are growing. We've assumed a 2% inflation and a 5% capital appreciation. So over 10 years, you can see your funds are growing steadily. And we've been conservative with those. But what happens if we go a little bit wild? Oop. What's happened here? Sorry, my clickers just uh, decided to go and rewind and play with the numbers. Oh, here we go. Let's go a little bit wild and actually make a, a, a little bit more of a, an optimistic prediction and say that, and we know historically the Caribbean market has grown in property terms between 10 to 12% on an annual basis. So if we say 10% capital appreciation, look, look what happens to your funds. Look what your 22,000 pounds today, sitting in a pension, sitting in an ISA, sitting lonely in a bank account somewhere, will actually become in 10 years time. 80,000 pounds is a nice number. And that's what you can achieve with Freedom Bay. And back again. Sorry about that. Oh, 
apologies for that. My clickers. Okay. So what is the purchase process? That's actually quite wordy, and I, I suspect probably the people in the back can't quite quite see it. But to become a part of Freedom Bay, you can start tonight. If you want to take the SIP route and buy it through a self-invested personal pension plan, your first step is to do a free pension review. Sean will talk to you a little bit more in detail in, uh, at the end of our presentation how to do it. Once again, there is a request for free pension review in your packs tonight. Um, and for those of you that are actually standing and don't have a pack, just go out to, to the back of uh, Hamish just lifting one of those packs. She's the lady with all the packs tonight. Fill one of those uh, requests for a pension review tonight, uh, pass it on to Hema, uh, and then the guys, you, you will either hear from Sean, Zahir, or Jeff, who will uh, talk you through a little bit more uh, about the process and can answer any other questions or queries that you have. Your pension review will be carried out by an independent financial advisor who will create a report about the benefits of transferring your pension from an existing pension provider into a SIP, and then only only at that point in time, if you've actually decided and you and you want to, um, uh, obviously uh, set up your SIP and transfer your 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 uh, funds from the existing pension provider into a SIP, you can actually do that. In the meantime, at the same time, with your pension review request forms tonight, fill in a reservation form. It costs you nothing to do it. There's no obligation under the EU rules and regulations. We're not allowed to take a deposit uh, tonight. Um, so we will hold a reservation. As uh, Mark was mentioning, we're 50% sold out. Um, so that reservation form will ensure that you come to the top of our pile once you're ready to actually buy at Freedom Bay. And we'll work closely with the independent financial advisor once he knows uh, the amount of funds that you want to invest to make sure that we make an allocation into Freedom Bay on time so that you don't lose out because we are we are selling fast. So tonight's your opportunity to, to actually fill in a reservation form. Uh, once your SIP is set up and open and the funds are transferred from your existing pension provider into your SIP, um, then uh, your funds will be transferred into the escrow account, into Heritage and held there uh, until we've actually completed um, the, the actual development and the hotel is open and operational. So all this wording is basically what I've actually summarized. If you're actually a cash purchaser, you can see it's quite worded, I'll summarize it for you. If you are actually buying as cash, you can fill a reservation form, tell me tonight how much you want to invest on a one-to-one -one basis on the back of the table over there. Um, over the next few days, we'll make. I'll give you a call, and we we can uh, make an allocation into Freedom Bay, and I can talk you through, you know, what villa, what villa you want to invest into, uh, what weeks you want to take, so we can we can actually talk into more detail over the next few days. Uh, you've got a 14-day cooling off period, so you can change your mind within 14 days. Again, it costs you nothing. Um, you know, we're not asking for the Brixton dollar tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're asking for a little bit more than the bricks and dollars tonight, but it will cost you nothing. You've got 14 days to change your mind. If uh, within that 14 day cooling off period you don't want to go ahead, then, uh, you know, no bricks and dollars asked uh, or lost. Um, and uh, if you do want to go ahead, then we'll issue the contracts within 14 days. Uh, you can have a read through them, sign them, uh, send them over to us. There's another 14-day cooling-off period, again, for you to change your mind once you've signed the contract. And once that 14-day cooling-off period is over, then uh, you can send the funds into, into Heritage. And that will complete your purchase. Your 6% will start ticking from the day that Heritage receives the money effectively. And you see a, a nice, lovely, round sum at the end of December coming into your bank account effectively. So that's how simple the process really is. And that, again, that long-worded, but is really how that happens. So just basically to summarize what happens to your funds, irrespective of whether you're buying through SIP or you're buying uh, cash um, because you want your money to make a little bit more, through your SIP or through your cash, the money obviously goes into the escrow account. 
And then once we've actually built the development, it sits there safe and secure, um, then uh, obviously we will um, exchange the asset with the funds once we've actually completed. So again, we're, we're all about minimizing risk. Uh, and not a lot of developers these days can actually show uh, that kind of uh, security for, for clients and for clients' funds. So, welcome to Freedom Bay. If you've got any more questions or queries, don't hesitate to come back to me at uh, the end of the presentation. And without further ado, I'd like to hand you back to Sean, please. Okay, because this is very important. An escrow protects you and your money. So, should anything happen, you get your money back. It's referred to as being ring-fenced. Okay. So, with your money going into an escrow account, by the way, also I want you to understand, this is about money. I think Robert alluded to the fact that it's a cold business investment. Excuse me, I've got to I don't always get a running nose when I talk about money, but uh, <laughs> so please excuse me. But ultimately, it's about your money working harder for you. Can you remember what the fixed guarantees were for the first two years? While your money is safe in escrow, you're still going to get money going into your 6%. What's the current rate of inflation? 3.5%. So your money is growing faster than you're losing it. Very important. Hey, now I hope you're starting to understand what we are achieving with this evening and with your support and um, working with the companies that we're working with. The first step is a complimentary review. If you have money in ISA, in bonds, in pensions, in savings of some kind, get a review done. Now is the time. The banks are manipulating the system. You need to know what's happening. The pension providers are of course, acting in their own interest. Do you know what your fees are? Yeah? Do you know how much your pension has grown? Do you know the performance? Well, working with, again, very strategic partners, independent, chartered financial planners, they have the highest accreditation in financial services, will carry out a complimentary review for you. There's a form inside your pack. If I just may mark for a moment. And I'd like you to take a few minutes. Could you, if you can put some music on, please, while we do this bit. Maybe some... Uh, Okay, it's Mayfield or something like that. It'll go down well. Uh, I'm prepared to have one in my pack here. Thank you. This is the form that we want you to fill out this evening. This is, this is what we're asking you to do. Allow us to help you. This would cost normally £460 to have this done, by the way. This service that we're giving to you free. Uh -huh. So you have a pen in your pack. Some feel good music. Yes. Bit loud. Okay. So you fill out this. Okay. You fill this out, and you get a complimentary review, absolutely free of charge. They will be able to go over the phone, get it done in a very easy way. Come back to you with a full detailed report. Please take the time to do this now. We've got literally maybe five minutes to do that. Have, put your hands up if you don't have a pack and you'd like to get a review. In fact, get a review. It's not a question, it's, uh, it's not a request, it's a demand. We're, we are here to prevent poverty and time. Please do that. We've got mystery in the house. Uh, hey, Mark, can I ask you to collect any completed forms? And Zahra uh, and Jeff, if you could help collect some forms, please. We have some more forms. Do we have some more pension review forms and investment review forms, please? Oh. We're nearly finished, ladies and gentlemen. Please take the time to do this. As soon as we finish this, we're going to give some thank yous, we're going to do the raffle, so don't leave. There's going to be more food, there's going to be more drink. You're really dear to my heart. I'm not passionate about what I do, I'm serious about what I do. Big difference. Okay? Um, so what we'd like to do is, for those who spread the word, we're going to have more events like this. 
more opportunities to find out more about what we're doing, more radio advertising, more radio station interviews, let people know. And what we will do is we will pay for you to go to Jazz with ICE just by giving us five people we were able to help. Just five. And it's a no money down deal. And they're going to make money. And you get to have fun in St. Lucia. And as Warren says, we party hard. Okay, so it would be a, a wonderful evening. Um, as you can see now, I'm starting to relax and uh, wind down for the evening. We're here um, for the rest of the evening. There's more food, there's more drink, and of course there's raffle as well. Okay, um, if I could ask Vina, please, special Vina, to come and join us and do this. Uh, The prize is champagne and chocolate together. Okay, draw twice. And is there any spa treatments? Not this time. Next time there'll be spa treatments. Okay, Vina, thank you. Anyone not put their cards in yet? Yeah, anybody not put their card in? Last chance. Okay, <laughs> okay and the winner is. This is for the chocolates. Shirley Morrison. Hey, come on down. Okay. The turntables as well. Um, somebody I grew up listening to. Anybody grew up listening to Mr. Yeah? All right. Okay, good. So uh, thank you ever so much. We look forward to speaking with you more. Thank you.